Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Before we actually get into the video and why we are doing a video today, um, I do want to tell you guys that um, I am okay. I apologize that I've not put up a video in a few days. I am okay. Everybody here is okay. It's just been crazy, crazy busy. Um, I've been out of town a couple of times due to Lions Club stuff and so I kid you not like I've been meeting myself coming and going and you know what like I was looking forward to a relaxing summer but so far I've not had that <laughs> because we've always had one thing going or another and it has been just absolutely crazy I mean I haven't even colored since the last time I showed you guys my completed pages if that tells you guys anything and I usually try to color at least something every day even if it's just like a little a little square or something but sometimes you know sometimes that doesn't always happen there's just days where I can't or I just don't feel like it or whatever but um, I've really not gone this long without coloring and I actually really 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 miss it and I need to use that to relax because it has been just a crazy busy couple of weeks but anyway now let's go ahead and get into the video and why we are here so today's video is going to be just a, a little bit of a haul nothing major I did pick up a couple of books plus a, a couple of other things that um, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys so first of all we'll go ahead and start with the with the books I did pick up three of them um, the first one is this one by Ruth Sanderson and this is the Cinderella in grayscale um, I think we've seen this one on a few different channels but this is one of the ones by Ruth Sanderson. So there's the back of it. And so I'll just show you a couple of the pictures in it, but it is grayscale and it is Cinderella. But the thing of it is, it is on this horrible Create Space paper. So if you color this, if you don't, like if you find a pencil that works well on this, that's great. But um, I'll probably be putting this on cardstock to color because um, coloring on this type of paper, you know, especially with grayscale, it's just doesn't do so good, um, depending on what kind of medium you're using. So that is uh, Cinderella. I will do a flip through of that book. And if you want to see that one right away, just let me know. The next one is also by Ruth Sanderson. This is the 12 Dancing Princesses. This is also a grayscale. So, and here is the back of it. There we are. And I'll show you, whoops, I'll show you a couple of the pages. Oh, it looks like we have a little bit of a story um, in them. I've not really flipped through this book too much. Like, I got it in yesterday. Yeah, I got it in yesterday, but like I said, I mean, you know, I haven't even really had time to flip through much of anything, so I'm... I'm kind of showing this a little bit to you guys and a lot of it is you're going to be seeing my first reaction too because I did not look at all of the pages when I got this in so but it is a, a really nice book again it's on the the crappy paper so that's the only downside of it but um it is very um very very pretty uh some of the grayscale on some of the pictures looks to be pretty dark but in a way that's good because it kind of tells you um you know where to put your shading and stuff so but anyway this is the the two uh, ruth sanderson books the cinderella and then the 12 dancing princesses i really like her artwork she does um an awesome job on on these and i really um i am really going to enjoy coloring in those so then the last book that I got is called Autumn Scenes, and this is Creative Haven. This was newly released, and so it actually just came in this afternoon. So again, I haven't even looked at, at a lot of these. I think I looked at a couple of the pictures when it came, but I wanted to go ahead and um, wait and show some of it to you guys and and just get the, the reactions as well um, on see on these now creative haven i mean i really 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 like their books they do such a really really nice job and the paper in it um it feels a little bit thicker it's like the other creative haven paper and the pages are perforated so you can oops you can take them out if you want to so again i will do a flip through of this book plus any of the other books that i am um going to um, you know, that I've showed you guys. I'll do a flip through of this one plus any of the other two that, that I've showed. I have a lot of, of flip throughs and reviews that I need to actually do. So there's the back of it. There's some inspiration on how you can color one of the pages and then same thing on the front cover. So typical Creative Haven. Um, really, really, really nice pictures. Very, very nice pictures. So 
that is all of the coloring books that I got. Um, like I said, I just got the three. But I do want to show you guys something else. Um, now, I have been challenged by Grace, <laughs> along with a couple of other people. Grace has, has um, issued a challenge for a few of us, and so we are supposed to color something out of a coloring magazine. And so, now I know that I showed this in, in uh, one of my recent hauls, but this is the the taste of home, the taste of home to color or taste of home to color um, and color or something like that. So my husband picked this up for me at the drugstore when he went to when he went to uh, go pick up a few things. So I had asked him to pick up a magazine for me. Um, I said that, uh, you know, they, prob they probably had those in the, um, in the section over there. And so he um, looked through, you know, a couple of the books and found this one. Um, he, liked, uh, he liked some of the pictures in it. So he picked this up for me probably about a, maybe a, a week or so ago. Um, so anyway, this, it looks like a coloring book, but it, I believe it is a magazine uh, because it was issued from this magazine company. So I did want to show you guys this again because, as I said, Grace um, issued us a challenge. And I wanted to go ahead and show you the picture that I think I'm going to do for this. And here is... <laughs> Here is this picture that I think I'm gonna do. It's it says wine about it, and it's got um, it's got a bottle of of wine, and there's some grapes to color in and stuff. And I think this one would would be pretty good to color on camera because um, with um, Grace doing hers on camera, and you know with her challenging us to color this in, I thought it would be only fair to try to color this on camera. So this is the picture that I'm going to color for Grace's challenge. And I'll try to finish it up with you guys on camera. It'll probably be in like two or three parts or whatever, but I will um, work on this with you guys. Now, um, I do have a color and gab coming up. And I am sorry that I've not been able to do that lately. Like I said, um, it's just been very, very hectic, crazy around here. And, you know, by the time I got done with everything, I've been just so tired. And, you know, I like to do these when I'm when I'm feeling like really just, you know, refreshed and upbeat and, you know, can sit and gab with you guys. Plus, I don't like really doing it at night because the lighting in the kitchen where I color um, for these things isn't quite as good at night and there's a shadow that comes across my book and I have a hard time seeing that way. So I like to do the color and gabs during the day. It's just been really nuts <laughs> and I've not really had time nor have I really been in the, the mood to, um, you know, to do those when I've had a few minutes because it, it, you know, it just would have been rushed and I just, you know what, when I do these things, I just like to sit down and relax with you guys. I don't want to have to sit down and, and then, oh, 20 minutes later, I have to go and get up and go to an appointment or something. So I like to do that when I I've actually got a couple of hours to sit down and do that with you guys. So I am going to be doing a color and gab this week. I promise, I promise, I promise it is going to be done. And I'm hoping that I am going to be able to get it up either, well, we're going to shoot for Thursday to try to get it uploaded anyway. I'm going to try to film it tomorrow. Today is Tuesday the 18th. And so I'm going to try to film it tomorrow and then um, I'll try to get it put up on Thursday. So that's what's going on with the color and gaps. I haven't decided what picture I'm going to do yet with you guys. So you'll just have to be surprised when I actually do that video. All right. So that is all of the coloring stuff that I got. Now I will show you a few other things that, um, that I also got. Now, a lot of you guys know that not only am I into the coloring, but I am also into fountain pens. Both my husband and I are. So my husband picked up a fountain pen for me and here is what it looks like. It is a vintage fountain pen, but it is an oversized Schaefer balance. And what's really nice about this, and, and let me just go ahead and bring it up close a little bit so you guys can kind of see it. Hopefully you can see it against my hand there. But what's really nice about this pen is the, the color on it. Now this is what I believe they call the the jade green but in that day and age like this kind of material would discolor and we th we think it's it's probably because of the the gases and stuff that the you know that the materials would would emit you know um 
and also with the sacks and stuff inside that hold the ink. So there, you know, there was the chemical reactions or whatever that would make pens like this this color. But this one is in pretty good shape for being as old as it is. And there is a little bit of slight color variation from the cap to the pen. Um, you know, it is the the matching cap to the pen, but you'll see that there's some slight variation of, you know, slight difference of color. And it's just because of wear and, and time and, and, you know, usage of the pen and stuff. And so a lot of times when you're getting a vintage pen, unless you really, really pay through the nose, because sometimes you can find a brand new one that's, that, you know, that's never, ever, ever been inked up. Um, I've found a couple of those at times but it doesn't happen very often. So a lot of times with these vintage pens, you're gonna find like marks, you're gonna find scratches, you're just gonna find some, you know, just different things that shows a lot of wear and tear just because it is an old pen. I mean, these pens were used. These pens back in the day were, um, were utilities. They weren't the luxury of collecting them. You know, people didn't collect them back then. It was it was used as a, a writing tool, you know, like people use ball points to this day. <gasps> oh, how dare I swear. <laughs> but um, as you guys know, I am definitely a fountain pen girl, and I probably about 99% of the time will write with a fountain pen, um, unless it's on like some carbon paper or, you know, paper that just won't take to fountain pen ink. And then I have to use that other thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, always, 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 you're going to see me with a fountain pen in my hand. So this is the, the oversized Schaefer Balance in the jade green. Now I do have it inked up with, um, with some Pelican green ink. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how it writes. Now, normally when, when I like to do this, this stuff, I, um, and I'm going to put my camera down just a little bit because it's, it's pretty high up now. But when I do these kinds of writing tests, like a lot of times I will try to get some better paper to do this on. But I don't have any of my fountain pen friendly paper handy per se. So we're just, we're going to have to just use um, just some regular scratch paper. But it's going to, oops, and I'm hitting my tripod. It's going to kind of give us like a little bit of an idea here. Now, I am doing this with the visual impairment, like I always say with my coloring videos. So I may have to get a little bit close to my paper so we can see what I'm doing. But I might even just try to do this through the camera lens. Um, I'm not going to promise really good handwriting or anything because, oh, that just isn't going to happen. And now I'm going to show you something else that happens with vintage fountain pens. <laughs> <laughs> inky fingers now a lot of times because like and especially like if it gets really hot and humid and if the the pen is kind of full it's going to um it's going to uh, leak just a little bit so it leaked just a little bit <laughs> um on my fingers so a lot of times that is going to happen with um with a vintage fountain pen um it doesn't always happen but these vintage ones are going to be a little bit more temperamental than than um the modern day ones so anyway um we're going to just write just a little bit of something through the the camera lens here so i'm going to write and I'm gonna try to, to see this through the camera lens so that we can, so that I don't have to get very close to my paper. In fact, let me just go ahead and try to zoom in on this just a tad. Okay. Just give us a minute here. All right, so I'm gonna try to zoom in here and hopefully it's not gonna come out blurry or anything, but I'm just gonna be using some scrap paper just to show you guys how this writes. Now this kind of writes like um, an extra fine nib. So we're going to just, um, right. We're going to just write here the quick. Brown. Now I'm not promising good handwriting because I just can't really do this through the camera lens. Jumped over. Now this nib um, like I said, it kind of writes a little bit like an extra fine, uh, the lazy dog. Um, it kind of writes like an extra fine and it's a little blurry. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get close so that you guys can see um, the nib and everything. But this writes kind of like an extra fine and a lot of times with these vintage ones, the nib is just a little bit scratchy. So it's just a little tiny bit scratchy, but it's really, really, really not that bad. It really is not that bad. Um, I can easily see myself doing a lot of writing with this in my journal. Okay, so 
Now let me try to get this so that you guys can see the uh, the nib. There's the feed, and then here is the nib. So that is what this pen looks like. That is my vintage Schaefer that my husband picked up for me. And I wanted to kind of do a little bit of writing to show you guys that. So not only did I get a fountain pen, but I got some fountain pen ink. And what happened was uh, both my husband and I um, hit it pretty good because uh, we both got some ink from this guy that was uh, selling about 10 bottles. Um, he was on this forum that uh, we belong to. It's a fountain pen forum that both my husband and I belong to. And so there's always somebody that's got something for sale. So this guy was selling 10 bottles of Pelican uh, fountain pen ink. And so there were two bottles of each color. So there were five different colors, but two bottles of each. So my husband got a set and I got a set. So I have five bottles of ink here. So let me show you what we have here. First of all, we have some dark green. Now um, these are from Pelican. These are from the Pelican Pen Company. Uh, made by Pelican and so these are little 30 milliliter bottles of ink and let me just show you what the the bottles look like now a lot of times you can get bigger bottles than this but these are just some really nice little 30 milliliter bottles of ink but the ink will go a long way even even a small bottle like this because you figure your average fountain pen is probably going to hold maybe a milliliter and a half of ink so um, depending on your nib size and the paper you're using um, like if you have a really broad nib, it's going to put down a lot more ink. So you're going to go through ink a lot faster than what you would if you had a fine nib or an extra fine. But even so, you know, these, these little bottles of ink are going to go a long way. So that is a dark green one. And that's what the bottles look like. I'm not going to take them out of, I'm not going to take each one out of the package because that will take a very long time to do. So this next one is a royal blue. And I'll take this one out just to just so you guys might be able to see the difference in color but a lot of times inside the bottles um, you may not be able to see as much because it's pretty concentrated in there but that is royal blue and that's what the labels and stuff look like then next we have a blue black which is a nice professional type of ink to use so blue black then next we have Brilliant Brown. This is a very, very pretty color of brown, I do have to say. And then last but not least is we have Brilliant Black. So it's always nice to have another black ink because you can't really go wrong with black. So that concludes everything that I got, the three coloring books as well as the pen and the bottles of ink. So I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. This video kind of got a little bit long, especially with the little writing samples. So I hope I hope it wasn't too boring for you guys. But anyway, I, I do like to do those when I when I get a pen. So but uh, this kind of uh, covered two different areas with the coloring and also with um, with fountain pen stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Leave a comment and tell me what you think. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. But better yet, hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. You all have a great day and we will talk to you in the next video. All right. Bye, guys.